People used to say the Jazz, one thing about them, they're always in great shape. Well, it was easy for me. Whenever I used to want to get them in shape, I'd make them take laps around me. What a call! Start the clock! What are you going to tell the people that we're, we, we don't have a good team? You can't promote a funeral. Hey, we got to get this on camera. <laughs> <laughs> if I took this body to India, people would be worshipping it. Is this the best thing that's ever happened to you as far as your career? No. The most fun thing? Well, no. My, my honeymoon was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, all right. But next to that, it was, it was good. Frank Layden for Eyewitness News. Uh, oh, we love having this guy in for a chat. Oh, Former Jazz memories. coach and president Frank Layden. Frank, welcome. Thank you very much. Nice being here. Now, I thought you forgot about me. Oh, we would not. And in a couple of weeks, you're going to be honored with a distinguished Utah Award by the BYU Management Society for your contributions and commitment to supporting and growing of moral and ethical leadership. So that's quite a big honor for you. Yes, it is. And I'm, uh, I'm delighted. Uh, the, the people from BYU that I've met with, who have already had a luncheon, uh, I can't say enough about it. They, they, they humble me. I, <laughs> I don't think I deserve it, but, uh, but I'm going to take it. <laughs> All right. Uh, 19 years ago tonight, Frank, John Stockton hit the shot, heard around Jazz Nation yeah. to send the Jazz to the NBA Finals uh, against Houston. Do you remember where you were that night? Yeah, I wasn't there. I wasn't at the game. Yeah. You know, I, I was listening to it on the radio. And uh, I, I, you know, I was one of those things. In fact, I was up on the avenues and I was walking. I was, uh, you know, doing, uh, doing, not jogging, but actually, you know, walking. And I was going back and forth. And, you know, I was concerned uh, about how far we could go. Mm -hmm. And yet I kept saying to myself, we've got the potential to be a very, yeah. very good basketball team. And, you know, it was so deserving that John did it. Yeah. because he works so hard and you brought him there it's got to be extra pleasing to you because just uh, you know it, a few years earlier well over a decade earlier uh, in the early 80s jazz were in trouble when you were uh, coaching this team and they almost uh, didn't survive yeah. but on a golf course one day I, you helped yeah. the jazz survive yeah I was up at Jeremy Ranch and I got a phone call on a Saturday afternoon a guy came out and said uh, hey you want it on the phone it's very important it's Mr. Battistone uh, uh, I, I rushed back in my car. I didn't know whether it was an accident or something was wrong. But he told me that we couldn't make the payroll on Monday and that we had to come up with somewhere in the area of about a million dollars. And he was uh, wondering, and he was asking me, could I think of a way to do it? And the only thing I thought the greatest asset we had was the number one pick and uh, in the draft. And I said, well, uh, I was already having uh, discussions with the agent for Dominic Wilkins. And so I, I said, well, well, maybe, maybe I don't know, maybe Atlanta yeah. would come up. And, and so I called Ted Turner, and believe it or not, he was home. <laughs> and I told him, I said, uh, Mr. Turner, I'm looking for a million dollars in cash. i got to have it Monday, and it's for, for the rights to Dominic Wilkins. There's not any guarantee you're going to sign him. Yeah. That he doesn't want to sign with us. He told his agents that he absolutely would not play in, in Salt Lake City. So anyway, uh, it, as it turned out, I got a call back from Stan Kasten, uh, who now is the fellow who runs the Dodges, and he said, uh, we can come up uh, with a million bucks, but you have to take two, a couple of players off our hands, he said, that, that are making a lot of money. One was Freeman Williams, who was a great All-American, but didn't cut it in the pros, mm -hmm. had some uh, problems, personal problems. And of course, the other one was Deuces, was John Drew, yeah. and he gave us a lift. Yeah. He wasn't as good as uh, maybe... Uh, yeah, he wouldn't have helped us over the long range the way Dominic Wilkins was, but for two or three years, he yeah. was outstanding coming off the bench. And Drew is part of that 1984 team. We always yes. talk about Stockton Malone, but that 84 team was the breakthrough that possibly saved the franchise because you got to the playoffs yeah, that year and won. Yeah, and you know, one of the things was that when we got the money, we got a million and a half. Uh, Ted Turner told me, he says, son, whenever you, you ever need money and you're desperate, never ask for exactly what you need. He says, always ask for more, and he sent a million and a half dollars. But that, that, uh, that 84 team was, was built, and, and we had a good bench. We had veteran players. Yeah. We talk about Kelly and Pauls and, you know, uh, some, some players. We had a great, great uh, players, and, of course, Adrian Dantley was... You know, Hall of Famer, and, and, and Mark, and of course, uh, uh, the great uh, 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 John uh, Stockton and, and Carl Malone, and, and you know, but the, the other guys who have always helped, I always thought Bobby Hansen played a big role in helping us. He was one guy who was willing to go out there and give his body up and play tough defense, and you know, we had a lot of guys like that, and, and, and of course, uh, you know, uh, I'm th thinking of uh, uh, who, the, the, the guy still lives here, uh, 
Uh, Thurl Bailey. Uh, Thurl Bailey. Uh, Thurl Bailey. Yeah. I mean, and, and has stayed in the community yeah. and really been outstanding yeah. here. But these guys, it was a team that was put together and it was just, it was just perfect. It was just ready to go. So in a matter of three years, you uh, avoided bankruptcy and you kept the team here and you won your first playoff series. Yes. Okay, but now you had fun. Nobody seems to be having fun like you did anymore in the NBA. No, because you, you 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 provide us with a lot of laughs. Yeah, you know what? I that started early in my life. You know, I took coaching very serious. I thought coaching wasn't just about uh, winning games or kissing beautiful blondes. When they run out of law. And she still sends me Christmas cards, by the way. That's the truth. You know, and that little darling, isn't she? Uh, but anyway, uh, the thing is that uh, I always thought that there were other lessons to be learned. I thought when players left us that they would be better than when they came. You know, we started chapel programs. We had wives clubs. We had, uh, we had also, we had book clubs. We, when we went on the road, we went to plays. We went to, to other sporting events. You know, I remember being on the sidelines uh, to a Raiders football game. Mm -hmm. and, and it should be fun, and it also should be a learning experience because it's only part of, of the lives of these guys, you know? It's, uh, it, it's, and so they have to live up to it all. And of course, well, you know what, this, this was, when the team wasn't good, I had to sell me, yeah. you know? And I had to make it sound like it was fun. And I still think the reason that it's not fun anymore is because of the high salaries, yeah. it's because of the high price of the ticket uh, tickets, that people go there and they say, hey, with all this money we're paying, <laughs> and there's Indiana Laden, he's doing a great job. You know? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about half of these, Frank. Yeah, yeah, and and you know we had the, the of course the the great uh, bloopers tapes made me famous. Yeah, you know with Mark ups. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> this was serious here yeah, when we went up to the hospital. Yeah, yeah, uh, we visited the hospital and I played Santa Claus and met. Still see a lot of kids. You know, I'll see them at ball games. I'll be at watch the beach yeah. games. Someone come up and say, you know, you came to me and I, I saw you at Christmas time when I was in the hospital yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So, it, you know, it, it has to be fun or else uh, you, you'll die. This yeah. game would kill you otherwise. Yes. Yeah. All right, uh, stick around. We're going to come back, and you're going to talk about your relationship with Jerry Sloan, the situation he's going through. That's coming up more with Frank Layden in just a minute. I'd love to. Obviously, uh, you're very close with Jerry Sloan. Tough news that uh, Parkinson's disease and Lewy body dementia. Your, your thoughts on Jerry and, and what he's going through? You know, Jerry, to me was what sports were all about. Again, you know, we were talking before the show about money, and, and players now a lot of times are concerned about how much money they're gonna make, and how, I think Jerry was the type of guy, he played the game because he loved it, yeah. and that's how he played it. We yeah. talked about the, a Trout, how he dives over fences and steals bases, even in spring training. Jerry, Jerry played the game the way it should be played. He gave it everything he had all the time. And when he brought it onto the court at, at, at back at, in coaching, he was the same way. Mm -hmm. He was always on time. He was always disciplined. He was demanding, all right? But he was fair. And I don't know how many players that he made better. A lot of people say, well, would you quit, Frank? I, mean, I was tired. I had, I had done too many 10 years of high school, 10 years of college, 13 years in the pros. It was too much. But Jerry brought us up a level. He raised the standards, you know? He made us much better than I thought we ever would really be. And you know, uh, the, the, our, the game with Houston uh, was perfect proof of that. And then when we got in the playoffs, you know, a break here or there, who knows? You know, we, we people forget that we lost uh, Mark Eaton and we didn't have him against uh, Houston. Houston won two championships when Michael Jordan was, in, was playing yeah. baseball. And I think we would have got one of those you know, and uh, and so that was a tough break. And then uh, the last uh, the last game we 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 gave Chicago, which might have been the greatest team ever, everything they could handle. Mm -hmm. And that was Jerry Sloan. He was demanding. He was driving. He was never allowing guys to just say it's good enough. I just want to get by. And I'll tell you why. We got guys in the Hall of Fame right now, and I know they feel the same way as I'm saying it right now, is they know that he got them there. Yeah. He made them play up to the best they could be, and people out of a small market like this took them right to the heights. Yeah. You know, Coach, there was a tough, Jerry was as tough as they come, but there was another side of Jerry. There was, there was a soft side of Jerry, wasn't there? Jerry's very generous. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you go back to his, uh, his hometown, 
McLeansboro, all right? Uh, you see, the Sloans are all over the place. Yeah. It's a park. It's a tree. It's a, it's a, uh, a, you know, part of the school. It's, you know, he, he has given back more than enough. And, and you know, oh, I'll tell you what, he, he tips, it's 100%. You know, I mean, uh, you know, he, he's that type of guy. No, he's, he's not a type that in any way is smug about his successes. If anything, he's humble about him, and he is one of the most generous men I know. You know, every time the, the, the staff used to go out, Jerry would take, take everybody out to dinner after a game, would be on the road. He always picked up the tab. You know, oh. and then the other guys got the per diem and everything else, but Jerry insisted that, hey, listen, I know I make more, more money than everybody else here, and he always. The other thing about Jerry, he was an excuse maker. He didn't blame the refs. He didn't blame injuries. He didn't blame people. You know, he said, this is the cards we were dealt. We gave it everything we got. That's all we can ask. And I think that's the way athletics should be played, should be coached, and, and, uh, and the way we should accept it as fans. You know, the biggest compliment you can have is someone that you're combative with a lot. Kenny Maurer, the official now in the NBA, yeah. one of the top officials. Yeah. I saw him uh, after a game uh, at a 7-Eleven. I said, so what do you think of Jerry Sloan? And he goes, he's one of the toughest, meanest guys that you'll ever see. But he is fair. Yes, and he is. And that's what you said. Yeah, it's the same thing. Uh, you know, the questions would come up in league meetings about more pay for the refs, more getting more refs so that they didn't have to work so many games. Jerry was always in their corner. And I think that the referees respected him for that. His fellow coaches, you know, a lot of them, oh, you know, Jerry's mean, Jerry's tough, Jerry's that. But I never saw any, I've never met a coach who said Jerry isn't the best. You know, and they wouldn't like to be like him yeah. and have his standards. I mean, Jerry's a guy that he starts out the first meeting and the first mm -hmm. first practice in the beginning of the season is, hey, yep. this is the way it's going to mm -hmm. be, and it's going to be my way or the highway. Yep. And so, uh, and and he's going to fight now yep. too. By the way, well, this is this this game he's in now isn't over. Yep. I've been out with him, and and he Jerry's going to be fine, and and uh, we just got to love him more. That's all. That is awesome for uh, to hear it from you, uh, BYU. Management Society, Utah, Distinguished Utah Award, June 14th. BYU is finally getting it right. <laughs> <laughs> June 14th. Yeah, people can get tickets if you want to come see Frank, and Jerry Sloan's going to be there as well with Tammy. Yeah. Go to that website right there, saltlake.byums.org. Let's do it again next week, shall we? <laughs> Let's do it every week, and we'll, right. we'll have you winning Tonys in no time. Right. The Freak hey. Laden Show, I yeah. like it.